Hi, my name is John Kelly. I'm a columnist at the Washington Post, and the Washington Post is a founding sponsor of the National Book Festival. We're very proud to do that and delighted that you're here. I am someone who loves hats. And to a hat lover, a chapeau file, you might say, there is nothing, nothing worse than losing your hat. And it is that terror that John Clausen explored in his best-selling and award-winning book, I Want My Hat Back. My hat is gone, the story begins. I want it back. And thus is unleashed a crusade as rich in drama as Odysseus's journey home, Arthur's quest for the grail, or Frodo's journey to Mount Doom. And with its shocking, subversive ending, I want my hat back is nothing less than toddler Tarantino. <laughs> and just as Quentin Tarantino had Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2, so Clausen followed up with, this is not my hat, and we found a hat. Clausen is from Canada. He studied animation at Sheridan College and moved to Los Angeles, where he lives now, to work on such films as Kung Fu Panda and Coraline. The New York Times called I Want My Hat Back charmingly wicked. Please join me in welcoming the wickedly charming John Clausen. Thank you. Hi. Can everyone hear me okay? They had to pinch my chest hair, so I'm hoping that I don't have to arrange it. Um, hi, I'm John. That's my name over there in one of the books I illustrated. That's actually a book with Mac Barnett. It's the third in a series of books about shape called Circle. I didn't know that was the first slide, so I'm going to press forward to see what the next slide is and surprise myself. There, that's the first slide, okay. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the three hat books today because I'm on my own and Mac isn't here to help make the other books better. Um, this was my first book that I wrote. This was called I Want My Hat Back. I illustrated it too. I thought I would do sort of a director's commentary on this to sort of ride the line between boring you guys and entertaining you guys. And we'll probably end up with one person in the middle that's actually into this, so we can try it. This was, uh, I wrote this book um, in about half an hour. Um, that's never happened since, and I don't know what I was wearing. I've tried to find the socks or something. It's just, you never know when it's gonna just smack you in the face. Um, the first page was the hardest page to write. My hat is gone, I want it back. I had like four different versions of that where he says my hat is stolen, I want it back. Or someone took my hat, I want it back. And you don't want to say any of that because then you're looking for someone who stole it. That's not what you want. You want just my hat is gone. Because that's the truth, it is gone. He does want it back. And here is a fox and he says, have you seen my hat? And the fox says, no, I haven't seen your hat. Okay, thank you anyway. I wrote this book and I thought, like, I, I wasn't really a very confident writer and I didn't really think I could write narration at all and I was worried I could write anything, but then I thought, if I could write the animals just talking without narration, then if they can't speak properly, that's because they're animals, not because I can't write. <laughs> and that's the tone of all three books and everything I'll probably ever write, I think. Have you seen my hat? Now this is a frog, and he says, no, I have not seen any hats around here. This is what we call escalation. Uh, the frog is saying even more things than the fox. The fox had said he hadn't seen any hats, and he says, I haven't seen any hats around here. Any hats, not even his hat. Okay, thank you anyway. Have you seen my hat? No, why are you asking me? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any hats anywhere. I would not steal a hat. Don't ask me any more questions. Okay, thank you anyway. Um, I wish this book wasn't so prescient. I wish it, yeah, I wish it didn't, it, it didn't relate to current times so much, but it does. Um, at the time, I haven't talked about it very much, but at the time, it really did come out of the financial crisis and my feelings about it. But we can talk about that in the Q&A part later. Have you seen my hat? I haven't seen anything all day. I have been trying to climb this rock. This is called misdirection. The turtle isn't even staying on topic. He's, con he's, he's very concerned with his immediate thing. Would you like me to lift you on top of it? Yes, please. This is something where we show the bear is actually kind of a nice guy in the moment. Have you seen my hat? 
I saw a hat once. It was blue and round. We haven't described the bear's hat yet. He hasn't said what it looks like. So the snake is describing a hat, kind of the opposite of what I thought his hat does look like eventually, blue and round. My hat doesn't look like that. Thank you anyway. See, we're getting a lot of information here, you guys. This is really getting very interesting and exciting, I think. Have you seen my hat? What is a hat? Thank you anyway. I don't want a question at the end of this about what that animal is. I don't know what he is. We haven't had to name an animal. We, there's no narration to say, said the thing. So we don't have to name him. He's kind of an armadillo mole who lives way on the boonies of this town or forest. His tree is broken and dead. He's never seen a hat. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Nobody has seen my hat. What if I never see it again? What if nobody ever finds it? My poor hat, I miss it so much. In screenwriting, this is called rock bottom. <laughs> and so here's a deer. What's the matter? I have lost my hat and nobody has seen it. What does your hat look like? This is very important. This page is very important. For the first time, you'll notice on this page, the characters are looking at each other. The bear has never looked at anyone before. He's looked at us. That's partially because he's a terrible actor and he can't learn to look at his castmates. But also, he's beginning to get into the story himself. He's a scad. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't know where his hat is. The deer is looking right at him. And not only does he look right at him, but he follows up. What does your hat look like? We can figure this out. Look for the deer, if I can paraphrase Mr. Rogers. In your life, look for the deer. His hat is red, he says, and pointy, and... I have seen my hat. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't really like to illustrate uh, uh, emotion very much. I, I resist it. I think it's something for my therapist to work on me with. But this is as much emotion as I could muster, and it wasn't enough. He has to be, he's very angry. He's surprised and shocked, but he's also extremely upset. But I didn't want to draw angry eyes on the bear for fear of the little ones being afraid, and I don't think that's really much in his character anyway. So instead, what you do as an illustrator is you fill your page with blood, and then you can get it across. That's the Tarantino thing. He was spot on. Tarantino was a big part of these books. So he runs back past all the other animals except the frog who I couldn't fit on for scenery reasons. I don't know where his pond ends and it's kind of vague and so he doesn't make it onto this spread. And he finds the rabbit who not only lied about the hat while he was wearing the hat, but he didn't even leave the scene after he got away with it. He's still there having broken that plant a little further because he's just a jerk and he's mildly surprised to see the bear again. You, you stole my hat. Um, I don't think the bear thought he was going to do what he's going to do until this spread, because the rabbit still isn't leaving. And he's kind of surprised, but again, he's not really apologizing. He's just looking at him like, what took you so long? And so the bear kind of snaps. I love my hat. Excuse me, have you seen a rabbit wearing a hat, says this new squirrel. No, why are you asking me? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen any rabbits anywhere. I would not eat a rabbit. Don't ask me any more questions. OK, thank you anyway. And that is the end of I Want My Hat Back. <laughs> this was a book I tried, and I liked the deer, as you could tell. Um, this one was called I Like to Be Alone at Night, about a deer who for sure didn't like to be alone at night. Um, and he was going around kind of telling everyone he did. Um, he says, hello, do you like to be alone at night? And the fox says, yes, I do like to be alone at night. And the deer says, so do I. Okay, good night. Yes, okay, good night. And he finds the frog. Hello, do you like to be alone at night? And the frog says, yes, I prefer it to being with others. And he says, me too, I prefer it too. He says, okay, good night, yes, okay, good night. If you ever wake your parents up in the middle of the night, this is kind of what they're gonna sound like. That book didn't work, it was very boring. Um, this one was called, I Will Trade You This Stick, about the deer again. You know when you have like, something for lunch you don't want and you try and trade it for somebody? That's kind of what this was. So he goes to the fox and he says, I will trade you this stick for what you have. And the fox has a tennis ball that he probably found in a ditch or something. And he says, no thank you, he likes his tennis ball. Okay, 
I will trade you this stick for what you have. And the frog has like a big gulp or something. And he says, no, thank you. I like what I have more than that stick. See, he's escalating again. OK. I will trade you this stick for your hat. And the bear says, I love my hat. Get out of here. <laughs> and he says, OK. He's still like digesting the rabbit, I think, on this spread. But no, he's not in the mood. And this book, again, it wasn't very good. It didn't work, so I skipped it. And we did this book instead. This is not my hat. We're going to read this one next. <laughs> Thank you. This is about a little fish, and we start off with this page, and it says, this, is, this hat is not mine. I just stole it. I took it from a big fish. He was asleep when I did it. And he probably won't wake up for a very long time. Is he awake? Yes. Do we know how this book ends already? <laughs> yes. And even if he does wake up, he will probably not notice that it's gone. Is he noticing? Yes. And even if he does notice it's gone, I, he probably won't know it was me who took it. Is he knowing? Yes, he's knowing. And even if he does guess it was me, he won't know where I am going. Which way did he go? Did he go that way? No. Did he go that way? Yes. Is this book going to end well for him? No. But I will tell you where I am going. I am going where the plants grow big and tall and close together. It is very hard to see in there. Nobody will ever find me. There is someone who saw me already, but he said he wouldn't tell anyone which way I went. So I am not worried about that. Um, when I wrote this book, I figured the crab in the previous page was telling the truth. He was like, no, I got you. We're, we're good. I'm not going to spill this at all. And then he's faced with the biggest fish in the ocean, and he just falls apart, I think. But a lot of you little ones think that the crab is lying through and through. Um, and that's probably good, I guess. That's probably, get, that's probably for the best. But I thought it was interesting and, and depressing. <laughs> I know it's wrong to steal a hat. I know it does not belong to me. But I am going to keep it. It was too small for him anyway. It fits me just right. And look, I made it, where the plants are big and tall and close together. I knew I was going to make it. Nobody will ever find me. I like this page because it's basically the only true thing he says the whole book. And now it's very quiet. Our narrator has stopped talking. And now the big fish swims back past the crab. And now he's back home. And what is he wearing? That's right. That's the end of that book. It's over. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we're going to rush through the longest in this series. And the, oh, no, wait. This was the first one I tried called Something Happened. I never figured out what happened. It didn't work. <laughs> we found a hat. This is the third one. This is my personal favorite, um, just because it was the hardest to write. And also, uh, I like these little guys. I think they're fun. There's two turtles who find a hat. This is part one. This is the truly Tarantino model. Finding the hat. We found a hat. We found it together. But there is only one hat, and there are two of us. How does it look on me? It looks good on you. This page was from, you guys ever seen European Vacation with Chevy Chase? There's a brother and a sister in that movie, and they're always fighting with each other. But at one point, they have to get new clothes in some European boutique. And they bust out of this boutique wearing ridiculous Euro clothes. And one kid says, I feel cool. And the other one says, you look cool. And if you ever have brothers and sisters, you really only care if your brother and sister like what you're wearing. That's just the rule of it. And so that's what this is about. It looks good on you. It looks terrible on him. It's way too can't even see his face. But it looks good on him. The other one says so. How does it look on me? It looks good on you, too. It looks good on both of us. But it would not be right if one of us had a hat and the other did not. There is only one thing to do. We must leave the hat here and forget that we found it. What do you think? Is that other turtle on board with this idea? No, he's not quite as convinced as the other turtle is. Part two, watching the sunset. 
We are watching the sunset. We are watching it together. It's pretty action-packed, you guys. What are you thinking about? I am thinking about the sunset. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Is he thinking about nothing? He's thinking about that hat, that's right. Part three, going to sleep. We are going to sleep. We are going to sleep here together. Are you almost asleep? I am almost asleep. Are you all the way asleep? I am all the way asleep. I am dreaming a dream. What are you dreaming about? I will tell you what I am dreaming about. I am dreaming that I have a hat. It looks very good on me. You are also there. You also have a hat. We both have hats. So he goes back to see his sleeping turtle brother. He goes to sleep, and they both have hats. And that is the end of that book. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that circle book they showed at the beginning because it was on the slide already, and then we'll take some questions. This is Circle. This is the third book in this book series. The other two are pretty good, if I don't say so myself. Um, but this one is really fun, and it was the latest one, so we're gonna read it. Circle. This is Circle waving hello to you guys. Can you guys wave bye? This was based on the uh, character selection slide from Mario 2 for the first Nintendo system when you picked them and they waved their hand. This is the title page, which I'm proud of for the circular copyright information. This is Circle. This is Circle's waterfall. One day, Circle and Square and Triangle played a game near her waterfall. Here are the rules, Circle said. I will close my eyes and count to 10. You must hide somewhere. When I open my eyes, I will try to find you. Square said, OK. Triangle said, neat. There is one more rule, said Circle. No hiding behind the waterfall. Square said, OK. Triangle said, why not? Because, said Circle, it's dark back there. Square said, OK. Triangle said, I'm not afraid of the dark. Circle closed her eyes and counted to 10. Ready or not, said Circle, here I come. When she opened her eyes, Square was just standing there. He pointed and said, Triangle went behind the waterfall. <laughs> I really like that page. Circle sighed, I will go find him. Circle said, Square, you are very brave. I know, said Circle, and she slipped behind the waterfall. It was quiet on the other side of the waterfall. Circle called out, Triangle, Triangle, where are you? There was no answer. Further inside, there was not much light. Triangle, Triangle, where are you? There was no answer. She went even further until it was all dark and easy to illustrate. We'd have so many dark pages, it was so much fun. <laughs> Triangle, said Circle, there you are. Triangle, she said, why do you always have to break the rules? There was no answer. Why do you always spoil all our fun? There was no answer. Why are you such a bad friend? There was no answer. I'm sorry, said Circle, I should not have said that. You are a good friend. You just made us worried. We love you, Triangle. Thanks, Triangle said from behind her. Circle turned around and said, Triangle? Yes, said Triangle. I sure am glad to see you and Square. Circle said, Square is outside. This is not Square. I thought it was you. No, said Triangle, that is not me. No, said Circle. Oh, said Triangle. Circle turned back and faced the shape in the dark. Who are you, she asked. There was no answer. Ah, said Triangle. Triangle and Circle ran very fast back through the dark, back through where there was not much light, back through the waterfall, back to the outside. Square was there waiting for him. They told him what had happened. Well, said Square, I'm glad I stayed here. Triangle said, now I'm afraid of the dark. Circle looked back at the waterfall falling. You know, she said, that shape in the dark might not have been bad. It might have been a good shape. We just could not see it. Circle closed her eyes. I wonder, Circle said, what kind of shape was it? 
Then they all closed their eyes, and they each pictured a shape. If you close your eyes, what shape do you picture? That's the end of that book. Thank you. OK, we're going to do some questions. If anybody has any questions, I think there's microphones um, for ease of hearing, if you have any. We have five minutes, so they have to be really good. Don't ask bad questions. I don't want to hear about your pets. Yep. I know I, you did like, um, and I want my hat back, um, blue and round, because um, in the other book, it was blue and round. The fish's hat is blue and round, right? I'm pretty sure the snake went for a swim and saw that fish. And I hate that idea because snakes swimming around just gives me the creeps. But that's, that's the theory. That's a strong, strong theory. What was the actual shape? I don't know. And Mac hasn't told me either. So I don't know. You'll have to figure it out. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Um, I want to speak on behalf of all teachers and say thank you so much for those books because we can teach so many things using them. Thank you. So um, at my school, <laughs> we um, have all the books, all of the hat books. Yeah. And so we want to use them to teach author's purpose with your um, dedication page. Oh. So can you tell me who there were? I don't have the books with me, but yeah. there were two people's names on I Want My Hat Back. Yes. And we wanted to know who those two people were that you dedicated the book yes. to. Yes. The first book is dedicated to Will and Justin. The second book is dedicated to Will and Justin again. Mm -hmm. And the third book is dedicated to Will and Justin always. And those are my brothers. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you for all the laughs you have given me. <laughs> thank you. Your books are so hilarious. Thank I you. absolutely love them. I and like this question very much. So far. <laughs> I'm giving you a compliment. Thank you. No. But I really wanted to say thank you for all the books that I have by you, and thank you. I really enjoy it. This is not my hat. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Why do all of them lie? What was it? Why do, why do all of them lie? Why do all of them lie? Boy, you are in the right town for that question, aren't you? I think it's because um, the next time you lie, keep track of your face and what you're doing. And you're trying to stay very still and not do anything when you're lying. Because if you do all nervous actions, they know you're going to lie, right? So next time you're telling a lie, just kind of keep track of what you're doing. And I like drawing people and animals that don't do anything. They just stand there. And if they're staying there and telling the truth, that's very boring. But if you're staying there and lying, now I have a story. That's why they lie. What's your favorite shape? Triangle. Sorry, that's not a very complicated answer, but that's my favorite. You know why? No, there's a good reason for that. It's because if you draw a square, if you make a mistake, he's not a square anymore. He's a rectangle or something. And if you draw a circle and you make a mistake, it's an egg or something. But a triangle, you can mess up so many different ways, and he still looks like a triangle. That's why I like triangles. Hi. Have you ever lost your hat? Yeah, almost every week. This cool. is a new one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's really frustrating. That, yeah, it's awful. I hate it when I lose my hat. I know, it's terrible. Having your hat stolen is especially demeaning because it means someone had to sort of get on top of you and yeah. like get a bu it's awful. Yeah. Why is your favorite book We Found a Hat? Why is sorry? Why is your favorite book We Found a Hat? Because it was the hardest to write and I didn't know where it was going until the very last page. Last question. Last question. Oh. What's the bear's name? What's the bear's name? None of my animals have names. It's kind of a policy thing. 
I'm sorry. You'll have to name him yourself. And we're doing a signing later. If anybody has more questions, you can come and talk to me for hours. We're going to be there for, my plane doesn't leave till 8, so please talk to me. Thank you very, very much for having me. Thank <laughs> you.